719 in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, you know the saying, you can find a Trini anywhere. And come this evening when uh, the episode is on, Arthur Joseph, who now lives in Southern California, to be more precise, in Glendale in the United States, will be a contestant in the American network game show Wheel of Fortune. Uh, he is a vacation planner for a cruise line, and he's also pursuing opportunities in Hollywood, which will probably be advanced by his appearance on the American network tonight. Uh, Arthur will be spinning the wheel and solving puzzles to win a once in a lifetime vacations and cash prizes as part of Island Hopping Week. How did this all come about? Well, he joins us now. Uh, very good morning to you. Very good early morning to you because I believe Arthur Joseph is 20 past three in the morning by you, not so? Yeah, dude, it's like, dog, it's like real early. I had to get up, uh, set the alarm. It, is, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, dog, I feel you. I feel you, dog. Um, but tell, tell us how this whole thing came about, that, that you were able to, to get this opportunity to appear on Wheel of Fortune. Well, uh, well, it's a funny story. I mean, I saw the advertisement online and I said, you know what, um, I'm doing all this hard work. And I always believe success is when hard work meets opportunity. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to go put, on, put in the application because I'm putting all this application every day. Um, so I put in the application, they call me. The process is you do an interview with the producers first. And um, if they like you in the interview, sometimes, you know, you, you got to like your character. And um, then you do a, a, a mock game. So they actually have you play a game with other contestants on Zoom. And um, I didn't do so well in the game. I, I missed a couple questions and um, I thought they, I thought for two, three months they didn't call me. So I was like, eh, it was a good opportunity anyway. And then bam, I'm in the grocery buying watermelons and wow, that was so racist. Yeah, I'm in the grocery just, you know, buying stuff and I got the email. I'm like, oh my God. And I, I started screaming and jumping in the grocery. That, so that's, that's one grocery I may not be able to go back in. And, and just on that, you, you made that, that mention in passing about being so racist, talking about buying watermelon. How, how because for, for a lot of us in Trinidad and Tobago, we wouldn't understand what you meant by that, but, but there are racist connotations about black people with watermelons, and there's things about grape yeah. juice, for example, you can't say grape juice in certain parts. How difficult is it for, for a black fella from Trinidad to live in an environment like the United States, especially after George Floyd last year and that particular tragedy, how, how difficult is it to be in that kind of environment? Well, I must say to, to the viewers that I'm a stand-up comic. I perform at Flappers Comedy Club regularly um, here in California. So some of these, so sometimes I make a joke, but it's, it's really a joke. But it was, I never really experienced racism in Florida. I'll be honest with you, Miami, Florida, because there's so many West Indians, so many Caribbean, South Americans in South Florida and Miami. You never really experienced the extent of racism until I came to California. And I've, I've seen it firsthand. I mean, um, just last year, I, I got stabbed for just being a black guy in, in California. Um, so I, I almost died. Um, I spent four days at the hospital and uh, the police said it was racially motivated. So it's difficult. You got to walk a fine line when you're African-American or black in or Caribbean in America, because you always have to be watching your back. You never know what's going to happen. And you always have to be cautious. Now, after the George Floyd, it has been a little different. I'll be honest with you. It's been a little different because now um, the other races, um, Caucasian, um, they are kind of embracing us a little bit better. Sometimes embracing us too much because I'm like, oh no, six feet away. Six feet, COVID. <laughs> so but it's just a funny story I'm going to use in my stand-up next time. Because now you have to be telling people want to come. You know, back in the 80s, People were crossing the street when they see you walk down the street. Now they're like coming towards you to help you with something. I'm like, mm, six feet away, COVID. Okay, so so what, what I'm trying to find out now, Arthur Joseph, apart from your appearance on Wheel of Fortune, what is your daytime job? You're a, career, you're a vacation planner, you're a comedian, stand-up comedian, um, and, and, and anything else that you might be doing as well. What, what would you describe as your daytime job? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, so so th th this is a process. It, it doesn't just happen that you just come and become a, a performer and entertainer. It's a process. As I said, every day I got to be applying for different jobs and, and hoping to get that big job. 
Um, so it's a process that you have to go through. And the one thing I didn't do was when the pandemic happened, stop, which what a lot of people in California did, they stopped. And all I did was adapt to the different situation because now instead of going into the studio, I have to create my own studio here in my kitchen. So, um, so yeah, so it was a process. It's a process. Um, I, I am an entertainer. I guess that's what I may call myself because I do stand-up comedy, I do acting, um, I do dance. So I will consider myself an entertainer. Okay, I make all right, I, 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 I hear you on that. So uh, how, how much are you hoping that this appearance on Wheel of Fortune tonight could be the springboard to greater things in that Hollywood environment? Um, I, I'm not, I am just gonna have fun. That's the most important thing. Whatever you're doing is to have fun. So I'm just going to have fun tonight and whatever happened after that, that's on the grace of God and how much I work after that. So it's all about tonight is just having fun and making everybody happy, entertaining. And once everybody happy, then everything happens for you. And correct me if I'm wrong, this would have been recorded already for airing and therefore you can't say anything at all about what happened. And I'll try, even though I try my best to squeeze out something from you to tell me what, what, what happened in the, in the actual show. At, at the end of it all, were you happy with the end product? I will be happy once everybody enjoyed the show. Uh, you, 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 should, you should go into politics as well, uh, the, the, the way you're, you're presented, to present <laughs> that answer. So, so you're saying the guy before the NJAC guy can hire me? That's what uh, you're saying? But look, it looks so. You could be the PR man for NJAC. You, you never know. <laughs> uh, how, how, how often do you, do you come back to travel? I mean, with, with the pandemic, nobody could travel anywhere. But uh, do, do you still keep in touch with, with, with the folks back in Point Fortin? Funny story. The thing is, because of the pandemic, I didn't realize I was only supposed to spend two years in California because I had to go back to my job in Florida. And I was only supposed to spend two years in California. And I was talking to a reporter yesterday and I didn't realize I have been here three years because that whole year of the pandemic is like, it, you didn't even think, oh shoot, it's a whole year of the pandemic. So yeah, so I've been here three years. Um, I'm going to be going back to my job in Florida soon. Um, what was the question again? <laughs> uh, in fact, con connect, connecting, with, connecting with people back in point 14. So I haven't been in Trinidad for almost five years because it's three years of California and probably, yeah, let's say about four years I haven't been back in Trinidad. I, and when, when you, you, you look on, on where your life is at right now, from, from your, your beginnings in Point Fortin, uh, are you where you are at as, as a person as far as your professional development, your personal development? How you, would you describe where you are right now? Well, this is the thing. Um, I, I was a successful salesman at Carnival Cruise and I was one of the top producers. I was teaching, I was, on a, I was a team captain, a sales team captain, and teaching their rookies. But I sat there for 12 years and I, I'm doing acting and entertaining at the side. I'm like, this is not what I want to do. So I took two years off to come to California just to um, explore the West Coast and um, tr you know, do some entertaining. And once I'm doing that, what makes me happy, and I'm making people happy in the process, then I think I've fulfilled part of my goal and I am on mission to f completely fulfill my goals. And, and Arthur Joseph, uh, we have just about a minute left and we really want to thank you to join us at this ridiculously early hour of the morning in Glendale in <laughs> California. You know, when you told us that story about you being stabbed and nearly dying, the automatic question is, never mind the, the, the greater interest and fairness and, and, and positive attitudes you're getting from white people now. What the hell are you still doing there? Jesus Christ. You really want me to add. The thing is, America is still, America is still up at the land of opportunity. It, it, I know it's a cliche, but it is still the land of opportunity. And, and the great opportunities that you can get as an entertainer, as a performer, it's, it's, and especially as a stand-up comic, it's 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 really, really a good thing. Um, there is good in America still. Um, and um, I like it. I have a lot of friends here in Miami, in California, in New York. My family's in New York. My family's in Miami. So it's still a wonderful place. Dude, I want to come home so bad. But that 14-day quarantine, dog, 
Can they reduce that to five days well, or 10 days? Of? 14 days? Oh, Lord. I, I really want to come back to Trinidad um, and visit and stuff and, and perform. You know, um, I've, got, I've been speaking to Errol Fabian and Trelden Lane and, and, and even Damian Melville, who happened to be my family. And, um, you know, as a stand-up comic, I really want to perform. I want to be on stage with Damian Melville. I want to be on stage with Errol Fabian. And even Damian Melville said he wants to come up to California to be on stage with me at Flappers, and that's cool. But yeah, but I love America and um, I love Trinidad. So, you know, it's I, I'm torn, but well, I, I, opportunities I got here were really great. Sure. Well, Arthur, it was great talking to you. We look forward to the episode tonight. And by the way, as, as a comic, I mean, you sound perfectly suited to the ultimate comic stage, the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago. So, hope, so you never know. We might, we might see you soon under the banner hey. of NJAC. No, well, I, I, no, don't put me in any one party. No. <laughs> All right, brother. You... I am for everybody. Um, UNC, PNM, and Jack, I am for whoever is the best person to lead the country at any particular time. Great. Um, I am not in any political um, um, uh, thing. Um, Kennedy, Kennedy Richards from Point Fortin is my sure. good friend. I mean, my real buddy. But I am not in any, you know, don't put me in any political box. You're really afraid that, boy. You're really, you're really something like you're afraid of being, being pigeonholed. Great, great to hear from you. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Uh, indeed, <laughs> uh, Arthur really Joseph, uh, someone who is uh, uh, indeed uh, looking forward to not, not just one moment because he's clearly very much involved in the entertainment business, but uh, on uh, Wheel of Fortune uh, this evening, uh, which will be, I think, about 8 o'clock uh, this evening, Trinidad and Tobago time. 7.31, and here, here as we go to the break, is a rainbow over Camden in Coover. Well, Camden, that's an area which was proposed for, what, another airport or something by the UNC People's Partnership Administration. See where that ended up? The second airport well, over, over Camden and over containers as well, captured by C. Peters to take us to the bridge.